Hey, welcome back to the channel. Sister Kate here. I apologize for not having done more videos, but I was traveling for like a week and so I really didn't have time to do anything. So I apologize for that. But I do have, I think, a pretty good video for you today. I think it'll be something you might be interested in. And so I want to get right to it because I've got to do chores, it's prep day, etc. So um, I was asked to think about a purpose for um, a group and to write that down. And so I did. And I took my ideas from that series that I watched, or er, er to Grohl, um, and the it's five things that are very important for tribal cohesion, uh, tribe unity. So I'm just going to hop right into it. And you, you know, if I, if it takes me a minute to remember each point, just give me that because it's, you know, it's not easy to remember. Okay. So the first thing was loyalty for me, for, for my tribe, for my, people that I'm going to be running with loyalty to Yahweh. Now in this, other model it was their number one loyalty was to a different god you may have a different purpose in your life that you want your loyalty to be to but in the case of them and I'm, I'm taking this model from a successful tribe that actually changed the course of history so to me uh, their model is valid because it's proven so Loyalty to Yahweh. That's what would be for me. The second one was loyalty to the tribe. And it's easy to say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're loyal. You know, we're, we always get together on just give a day Wednesday and we always go bowling. That is a part of it. But it was way, way deeper um, for those people. And it needs to be way, way deeper for you. Because there are, and the, the series was very good about presenting problems that would challenge the people's loyalty to their tribe. They had two different things they were battling, as well as trying to figure out the, the hunger situation, um, feeding their livestock, producing things. And I'll go into that a little bit uh, with the third point, but the loyalty to the tribe also was challenged from within, from personality conflicts. And they had characters who had bad personality flaws. And they tried and they tried to be patient and there was a lot of you know back and forth conversations and accusations and you know confrontations uh and in the end what won out what they stressed and what is important is the tribe is more important than the needs and wants of one individual and also that the tribe has to be flexible enough to try to work with this brother or sister, to get them in line, give them a chance to change, to correct their own behavior. Because if you're an adult and your ears are open, you should be able to do that. Uh, but then ultimately to deal with that person if they weren't willing to change. All right, so let's go on to the third point, which was working for the community. And that's gonna, I'm gonna bring back into that the idea of the different things a tribe has to deal with on a daily basis. And in the particular tribe whose model I'm following, they had work for the men and work for the women. And the work for the men was to be a soldier. And so they showed pretty well that every day the men were practicing their skills. And historically, these men were very skilled and they were some of the best fighters in their time frame. And it required a lot of training on horseback, with weapons, fighting one-on-one, -on -one, um, bowmanship, swordsmanship, spearmanship, uh, being able to uh, shoot a bow from horseback. They worked very hard and their young boys and girls were, were trained from, a, you know, like four or five years old to start these skills. And that's the other thing about that tribe. The women also trained in weaponry and self-defense. Um, it wasn't something they did all the time every day, but they definitely showed them doing uh, archery practice, doing um, fighting with swords. And so when people overran the camp or when there was conflict, the women fought as well to defend the tribe. Um, but the women's work, work 
was specifically dealing with the, the sheep, the wool, and the products from their herds. They kept showing a, a, a man had the task of uh, driving the herds, like moving them around to where they, they would eat for the day, and I'm sure protecting them. Um, but the women, once the sheep were sheared, and they didn't show who sheared those sheep. I'm assuming it would be the men. If you've ever sheared a sheep, you know why. Um, but the women had the task of dealing with the wool, and they did many things with that wool. The, the tribe depended on the women doing their work as well. They made all the clothes, they made the boots, they made carpets and things to cover their yurts on the floor and also on the outside. And then the women did extra and sold the carpets to bring money to buy uh, wheat and things for the tribe. So it was, you know, everyone in the community knew what they were doing. And there were other jobs too. It was a blacksmith and there was a pot maker, um, what, a potter. Uh, there were um, people who did some metallurgy. There was a medical person. So the tribe was successful because everyone knew their jobs and were busy at their jobs. It was very seldom that they presented anyone who just loafed around all day. They showed people constantly carrying things, moving things, um, doing their jobs. So working for the community, that was number three. Now let's just recap number one, loyalty to Yahweh or some higher power, whatever, you know, define it for yourself. Um, loyalty to your tribe, working for your tribe, that was three. Number four was justice. Now, for Torah keepers, it's easy for us. The laws are laid out. If we follow the laws, then justice is served. If you have no, you know, no pre-written rules, then it would be whatever rules your tribe comes up with. Rules, laws, however you want to phrase it. Um, and it would have to include defining what your rules are and then what the punishment or or uh, even if it's not a punishment like um, whatever the consequence would be for breaking that rule so let's just pr uh, pretend it's theft theft is an easy thing to cover because theft happen happens often uh, and there's many different ways to deal with it. In some Muslim cultures, if you're a thief and you're caught, they cut your hand off. In Torah, if you're a thief and you're caught, because if no one catches you, does anyone know you stole anything? Um, if you're caught then and brought in front of the magistrates or the elders or whatever, then you must pay back what you took four or five times. Uh, the increase. So if you steal one chicken, you have to pay back four or five. I, mean, I think it's five, but you know, you'd have to check Leviticus for yourself. Um, and that's how they would deal with theft. Um, so y your justice, it's, it's defining the crimes and then the punishments and then doing them, right? You actually have to do them. And the series I watched, uh, did a good job of doing that as well. They showed people who had committed a crime, whether it was um, against another person or another tribe of people, because there were also rules about how we interact with other tribes. They were pretty good, you know, pretty dedicated to this guy deserves this punishment and then carrying it out, including in the case of a very particular uncle who was very, very wicked, beheading him and uh, some a lot of the punishments that were handed out were done in front of the whole tribe so that the tribe knew he did something wrong and this is what he gets and they also knew that their leadership was sticking to the rules because it's really important that people have that sense of of right and wrong and um, things being corrected because you all know if you have some situation some person like at work who's doing things wrong and nobody corrects them, it's just an irritation for you. It's one of those stresses that going to work every day and there's that guy that keeps doing this thing and he's not supposed to. It's very annoying to people around who know and expect 
the rules to be upheld. So that's number four, justice, and then five is righteousness. So righteousness for a believer includes your correct relationship with God. Um, but it's also your uh, correct relationship with your brethren um, and your self-control, your uh, making sure you are also walking on the correct path. So those are the five things. I'll reiterate them one more time. First one was loyalty to Yahweh or whatever your higher power is. The second one was loyalty to your tribe. Uh, very important when things break down. Um, you don't want to be a spy for another tribe. You want to, it, it's going to keep your life together to make your tribe strong. I'll just say that. Number three is working for the tribe to make sure that you are contributing to the benefit of the tribe. So that if you need something done at your homestead, you first do the tribal things and then go fix that thing. Um, fourth is justice. The tribe has to have boundaries, rules, uh, consequences. It has to have leadership. I didn't really talk about that um, in the uh, series that I was watching. The leadership was one man. He was the, I forget what they called him, the bay, the shaw, the something. But under him was a whole set of older gentlemen um, leaders in the tribe and uh, they would have you know meetings and discuss things bring up issues uh, people would come and present their case there would be witnesses there would be judgments handed down and discussions and then once the everything was agreed upon the one leader would say okay we've all decided this guy's guilty or he's innocent and here's the result of that we're either going to punish him or we're letting him go what is that big bird flying in the sky? Um, justice was four and righteousness was five. And I hope this helps you all. I've got to get doing my chores for number one and for number five uh, because it's prep day. So bless you all and I will see you later. Shalom.